Hi friends, how are you? It is the 12th of July and I'm finally getting around to making my June wrap up video. June was a good good month for me. Um, the reason I'm glancing down is because I have um, my reading log book here. Um, this was one that I got at Christmas and I have been using it um, as you can see but I have all the books I've read down here and I can't remember them all off the top of my head but I'm going to go with the stack first. Um, if you hold on I'll tell you how many I read. Four, Gosh, I read 14 books in June. Whoa! Good grief. That has blown me away. Whoa, that is, that is a very, very good month. So, let's go on to them. First one was Aunt Dimity and the Duke by Nancy Atherton. I gave this a solid four out of five. Thoroughly enjoyed this book. Um, I just think Aunt Dimity is such a, a fun ghost character and I loved the character of Emma Porter and the way that she ends up at this this castle and ends up as the kind of gardener which she wasn't really supposed to be and it just it was like it's a story of at times of misunderstandings but the misunderstandings work out really really well so this is my second Aunt Dimity book and I will definitely be getting more um, my friend Beth over at Soul Stained Ink she started me in Aunt Dimity and she started something. Yep, I now have to get the whole series. <laughs> so I will be definitely getting more of these. Um, what else? Right, I'm not going to do these in order, but I'll tell you I better do them in order, right? Okay, next one was Happiness for Beginners by Carol Matthews. I gave this one sort of a three to three and a half out of five. I did enjoy it. It was a second chance book for me in that I'd started it and couldn't get into it to begin with and then did get into it. And yeah, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the premise of a school for children that either have learning difficulties or don't fit into mainstream education and that they do a lot of their learning in on the farm. And the, the, the actual animals themselves are characters, which is really, really lovely. Um, and also you can see how they all pull together and how just by one student arriving, so his magnetism and the way he acts actually helps other people as well so really i did really enjoy it um and this is like my second or my second Char Car carol matthews books i think i would read more um so yes yeah, so i enjoyed that one i then read the telephone light the telephone box library by rachel lucas again three and a half out of five for me Really enjoyed it, enjoyed the characters, enjoyed the premise. I liked the the context of it was because our main character was there to look after a little, a little an older lady supposedly, um, Lucy, and she was supposed to look after or keep looking in on this older lady. The older lady was not having it. She she was fine on her own, which I thought was really really funny. Um, yeah, the older lady was called Bunty, and Bunty has a pet boa constrictor. Yeah. Not my ideal thought of a pet, but never mind. Um, but it was also the story, it was lit, this village is near Bletchley Park. And Lucy's a history teacher, so Bletchley is, or is it, that was very, very interesting to her. And she was taking a sabbatical from her work, and as I say, to go and sort of look after, or keep a lookout for Bunty but she gets involved with the, the village life um, and she ends up finding out more about the Second World War through Bunty's eyes and through other people in the village's eyes and I found that really really interesting and just the fact that they did that the telephone box held such a big meaning for a lot of people so I would definitely I'd recommend this one I would give I would, if I were you I would, I would give it a go then I then read Nantucket Sisters by Nancy Thayer and I loved this book. This got a four and a half out of five for me. Um, just the interaction between the two main um, characters, Maggie and Emily, 
the fact that they come from different sides of the money divide um, but the friendship stays and the friendship sticks throughout I thought was fantastic no matter how much the more um, well-off parents didn't want their child to be friendly with the less you know the, the more poverty child and as I say it's how their friendship has stuck through the years things that have happened to them but no matter what the friendship has stayed there even with gaps and everything it was beautifully written descriptions of Nantucket were just so nice and it's like oh, at some point I really would love to go to Nantucket and just to see the places that are written about in these books um, but yes a great summer read and would highly highly recommend then I read Until Tomorrow by Nancy Nagel unfortunately I thought this was a first in the series not the very last one yeah that's helpful isn't it but it didn't detract from it you could actually read this as a standalone and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it um, the interaction between Flynn and uh, Ford was great. What drew me to Ford was actually the fact that he's a glass blower, and of course I do I do stained glass and glass fusing and stuff. So that he that really drew me to this character. But I like the fact that it's like Flynn is like, well, I'm doing this because so my grandparents can have their retirement. Um, I'm running their in for them and you get the feeling that she's not really 100% happy about it but she has to stick with it and it's basically the story of her and Ford their romance and how they both have to make decisions and I really really liked it there is a sort of there's a Christian element to it which I, I really liked as well um, so yes again a great read would highly highly recommend it I then read, oh gosh, got some more to show you. Here we go. An Alaskan Christmas by Jennifer Snow. I was recommended this by Steeped in Books. She read, or she'd got the second one to review and she'd read the first one. Um, so I thought, well, I can't go and get the second one if I haven't read the first one. So I got the first one. And I loved it. This was a solid four and a half out of five for me. Really, really enjoyed it. My first book by Jennifer Snow, and it won't be the last. I actually ordered the second one in this series and it arrived yesterday. So that is like, yes. So I, it's a spicy book. It is spicy, but it was, I actually quite enjoyed the spiciness of it. Um, I didn't know whether I would or not, but I did quite enjoy the spiciness of it. And I loved the interaction between Erica and Reed. What I did find interesting was that Erica was, you know, obviously still dominated by her father. Um, and in some ways maybe didn't believe it in, in, some, in some ways of her own abilities as a surgeon and as a researcher. Um, so that was very interesting to see that play out and how, how she coped with that and how she coped with being on a vacation because normally she is like so busy. She doesn't have time for one, um, but she has to take one. It was lovely. I really like books set in Alaska. It's another sort of place in my, not a bucket list, but somewhere I would like to go just to see it and experience it. But I would definitely recommend this one. And then I read Summer at Lake Haven by Rianne Thane. This was a four out of five for me. Really liked it. Loved the interaction between Sam and Ian and how she wasn't too sure um, and how she eventually you know, got won, won over, etc. It's the final book in the Haven Point series and it's like, oh, because I've loved the Haven Point series so, so much. They have been so good. Um, so, but what I have done though is I've bought one of her, the first book in the next, one of her next series. I love Haven Point, I love the community that it's in, I love the characters. The descriptions of the area are, are superb. And again, another place I want to visit. Why is it you always kind of want to visit places that are locations and books, if they are actually real? But no, 
definitely, definitely recommend this book. Thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope you do too. But I would say, yes, you can read it as a, as a standalone, but I think it's one of these things that it'd be really nice to start at the very beginning of the series and just read, you know, maybe do a marathon of them all. But yeah, definitely love that one. The next lot of books I have, I'm going to have to keep glancing down so that I can remember what they are, are all from NetGalley. Um, I went back onto NetGalley and asked for some books and I got them. I'm not going to, I think I'm maybe just going to list them. And then what I plan to do is do a wrap up video of the, I've got one more to read in a set, and not in a set, but in this grouping. And I think what I will do is I will do a, a sort of video, a NetGalley a net galley video so that I can talk about all the books. So the first one I read was Pause and Order by VN Burns. I really loved this one. It was good. Um, VN Burns is a fun author for me. She writes cosy mysteries. There's dogs involved. I don't think I have to say any more about that. Then I read Snowed Under and I'm afraid I can't remember who the author is. I can't remember the author for any of the other ones. Snowed Under, another cosy mystery set during a blizzard up in oh gosh i can't even remember so it's probably just as well i'm doing a, 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 another video for these but again i know i re i enjoyed it uh, pause in order i think i gave four out of five snowed under i gave four out of five i then read tea and treachery which is again another cozy mystery loved it um four out of five for it very solid then read freaky and fresno didn't enjoy that one so much probably gave that one a three out of five and I'll explain why when I did the video um a summer of surprises I did enjoy that um that was probably I gave that a four and a half out of five really good book loved the interaction between the characters and everything but as I say I'm not going to say very much about these just now then the next two, these are not Net Galley, these are just ones that I had in my Kindle. One was Book and Brews, and that was fun because it was to do with a witch who takes over her aunt's bookshop. But th there's a cupboard in the bookshop that takes her back to her hometown, where she's allowed to do a lot more magic than she can do in, shall we say, the real world. And it was just really good. Again, a cosy mystery. Um, there's, a, there's a romance in there. Um, she tries to help people and it is just a fun fun read and I would definitely definitely recommend it you know I've actually got the next one in the series because I want to see what happens so I would definitely re recommend that one and then the final one was The Chocolate Garden by Ava Miles um, I again gave that one I'll give that one a, I gave that one a four out of five really enjoyed it enjoyed seeing the growth of the characters and how what the main character thought about her mother i'm afraid i can't remember it's like my brain has just gone kaput. um but what her what she remembers of what her mother is like and why her mother is like that is not what the way she sees it is maybe not the truth and that um, her mother maybe realises now that things should have been different. So it was very much a growth book, which was very nice, I have to say. Um, and I have got the next one. It was the second one, sorry, that was the second book in the series. I've actually got the first one so I can read that. And I would read the next ones because I want to just see what happens. But that's it for 14 books. I think I did quite well. Um, but as I say, the net galley ones you will get a better review of, um, hopefully within the next week and a bit. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've read any of the books down below, please let me know. If you want to know anything more about the books, just again, please ask me down and down below. Hope you've enjoyed this book, this review, this quick wrap up. Please give it a thumbs up um, if you've enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button and the notification button. It'd be really nice to more subscribers and you'll get to know when I put out new videos. But that's it for this video. I hope, so hope you've enjoyed it and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.